Hello YouTube, it's your boy, Chameleon Session. It's been a minute since I've made one of these Chameleon Theories, so I'm very excited to get into what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, but, I've been busy, you know what I'm saying, doing my work, taking care of the family, but also doing my music and stuff. I've dropped a couple releases since I did one of these Chameleon Theories. The next one that I'm going to be coming up with is this right here. Beats by Jan is Vanilla, okay? So the moniker is Beats by Jan, and she's dropping an album that's called Vanilla. That's coming out November 11th, 2019. You can peep it on any of my streaming channels, YouTube, Spotify, Bandcamp. You can also catch the cassette release that's going to be dropped by one of my favorite lo-fi hip-hop labels, and that's Nakubi. If you haven't checked out Nakubi, you definitely got to peep their site. It is loaded with seriously, seriously talented and dope artists that I am very, very proud and humbled to have a release coming out through Nakubi. So, without further ado, let's get into the next Chameleon Theory. My next idea for Chameleon Theory, we're going to jump back into my childhood. This is what I played with primarily. One day, I had a choice. I could either get a Super Nintendo or I can get the Sega Genesis. So I'm standing there in the store and I'm staring at both of them, literally. I'm looking at the SNES and I'm looking at the Genesis. Now I knew a couple of people who had the SNES already, so I didn't know anyone who had a Sega Genesis. And that shit looked alien to me. So without a doubt, I went ahead and snagged one. That's what I wanted to buy. I ran across this one game, mad inspired. Not because of the gaming, it's very mediocre. But like Crusader, if you haven't checked out the music on that thing, damn, it is amazing and that really inspired me to go ahead and try and experiment with this. So I'm gonna sit with you and we're gonna figure out how we're gonna make a beat on the Sega Genesis Mini. All right, so now that I've done some gameplay with uh, Light Crusader, now we're gonna get into the computer because I recorded it on the DAW. I think my idea is, because the way my whole setup is, I really don't have a way without creating a loop, like a feedback loop, uh, to sample in here from my computer because typically I'm always sampling off of anything else in this room aside from the computer. Now I've added a couple of effects on onto the DAW itself. Okay, we're gonna listen to it clean. All I did was a little bit of compression and the uh, the Valhalla vintage verb. I love this reverb. Love that opening track, man. So now I'm gonna listen for this. There we go. That shit right there. So I'm very excited, man. We're gonna get into chopping up that on the uh, NPC. And my idea is this. Okay, I'm gonna to have to bounce this track to two channels onto my iPhone so that way I can sample off of my iPhone into here so that way I can get still be recording and y'all can see what's going on you know what I'm saying I'm very excited about this what's so unique about the Sega Genesis is it had a Yamaha FM synth chip inside the uh, in the console, so that's why the music was real distinct. It had a very different, distinct kind of uh, sound generator. I love FM synthesis. You know what I'm saying? I I picked up the uh, the Yamaha DX, which is the the reface version. Okay, so that one is like the remake of the, like a DX7, and I love the sounds that I produced onto that or that I've made, you know, created off of that FM synth. So when I listen to a lot of the Genesis games, it's just all FM synthesis. And it has a very unique, distinct sound. This is the pause menu. Pause menu is seriously dope. I can sleep to this shit all night long. You know what I'm saying? It just sounds so, mm. I'm gonna dump the whole file, which I think is like 17 minutes long. So I'm gonna put that onto my iPhone and I'm gonna plug in my iPhone into my mixer, this little small Yamaha mixer that I got here. This is where I sample from going into the MPC. The reason why I do that, again, and I've recapped this a lot in like in my past uh, videos, but I like to be able to EQ my samples before I've actually sampled them. You know what I'm saying? So. If, if, and there's a lot of music out there, you know what I mean? Like, like sampling records or, you know, whatever it may be, sometimes you may want to bring down some of that EQ, you know what I'm saying? 
So when you bring down that EQ, that that helps out later on in a mix if there's something that was unwanted or maybe a little too high. So anyway, I'm going to get this on my iPhone and we're going to get to chopping. Okay, now I have taken my iPhone, which is being utilized right now uh, to record this video, but I have gone in there and I sampled some parts that I wanted to use to make this beat. So we're going to check out the samples that I got going and we're going to chop them up, see what we can come up with as far as a melody is concerned. So here is the sample. Love it. I love that sample. The first thing that we're going to do is, is look over what we have. Okay, so you got to kind of do the counts to figure out what this sample is going to be, right? I know how I'm going to chop this up. So you're going to have this pad right here, which is the bottom right hand corner. Uh, that's pad number four. If you're starting from like one, two, three, four, and then up to 16. Okay, so that fourth pad is going to be a longer pad. It's going to be like a two count instead of the one count. So I got one, two, three, four, five six gonna hit on the five pad you see what i'm saying up here on the top left hand corner that is pad number 13 14 15 16. so i hit the pad first and then i lightly tap the other ones so it doesn't trigger that sound and i'm following the sample so here's here's what my thoughts is You have in this menu, okay, which is like the sample menu, you can see what samples you've recorded. I have a sound wave here, and I can visually see the sound wave. You have different options. You have a trim, loop, zone, parameters, edit, and play X. Play X, of course, is to play the sound. If I untrigger that or unpress the button, then it stops the sample. You notice when I hit the pads, it triggers the whole entire sample. So just keep that in mind when I'm going through this all, okay? So I've got the trim, which I can trim down some fat if I want to go from the beginning to the end. I've already done that with this particular sample, so I'm not going to do anything else to that um, to this sample yet. Loop. What happens with the loop, and I think I have some ideas to use the loop in the sampling, and I've been wanting to do that on a video. So we'll get into that later, okay? Zone, this is what I use to chop up my samples, okay? So I got 16 pads that I am going to assign sounds, but I can't just automatically assign them the way it decides to do, because what it's doing is it's taking the entire sample and equally dividing it by 16. That doesn't necessarily work in this particular sample because it's not perfect into uh, beginning to end, and I'm going to do a two count on pad four, and I'm gonna do a two count on pad 13. So I have to go in there individually and do this, okay? So that's what I'm gonna be working on right now. Okay, now I've chopped up this, uh, I've chopped up the whole thing, okay? And so we're gonna listen back to what I've got. So remember, this is the original sample. So now I'm going to go in there and come up with something, okay? So right off the bat, what I normally do is I detune the sample. So I'm going to go in here into my, into my parameters and actually change up the tune into the sound, okay? So let's listen to this first one. I want to set this to mono so that way you can hear it be detuned. Move it down to 30. I'm going to go ahead and assign all these to negative 30. It always sounds dope to me. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to use, and then I can go and manipulate some more, but I'm going to mess with this for a minute. And you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, so I have come up with a, uh, a melody that I think is going to be mad dope. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's missing something, okay? Uh, and what is definitely missing is this one, this one. Yeah. I'm going to utilize the loop feature. There's three samples in here that I want to make them a loop. This isn't a typical loop that I'm talking about. This is something different. So first thing I want to do is utilize that sound. So I selected the sound that I want. Now I'm going to hit F5 or Shift 5, and it gets me to the screen that I want to manipulate. Notice here where it's got trim, and then you see this here. This is where I cut down some of that sample. You know what I'm saying? I want to go to loop. So loop is I want to turn it on. What happens is, it's some magical shit. Now for most of y'all think that would be annoying as f it's not. That's where the magic happens. That's how I make my own delay effects in the MPC 2000 XL. Now I'm gonna go back and listen to what I just did. See what I'm saying? You have it on note off because it's in loop mode. But I'm gonna move the decay down. When I move this decay down, let's try 60 and see what happens. Boom, I have instant delay on this motherfucker. Right? But it's a unique type of delay. It's that NPC delay, that old school, that po boy delay, right? That's what I want, man. Mm. Now it's time for some drums. I'm going to make a beat with the samples that I have loaded on my MPC now. So we're gonna go over these, these sounds and I'm going to create a beat with it. Then what I'm going to do is, is take that beat, take the melody out, all of the uh, samples that I had. That I'm going to mute after I make my beat. So let's listen to the drum kit that I have. This is a kick. I have two kicks. Now you notice that one is tuned higher and it has a different filter added to the kick. You feel that? The next one is a snare. Very simple snare. It is panned slightly to the left. It's a hi-hat. This is another snare that I have panned slightly to the right, and it's triggering both of them together. So that way it gives it more of a stereo sound, and it slaps a little bit better. See what I'm saying? The next one is another type of hi-hat that I have. And then I have a third hi-hat up here. So this is to, you see how they're differently tuned, right? I have this one tuned 30% down, okay, or 30 values down. This one is set at the original. We're going to create the, uh, the beat onto the melody. So I've taken a couple of nights uh, off just letting this thing set and me just kind of thinking without being in front of any of my equipment. And 
now that I've gotten back to the studio, it's probably been about a week since I first started recording this video. I was listening back to the beat and I decided that I think it'd be a lot better, more of a bounce to this beat than having like the, the straight up old school type of, um, you know, drumming. Typically I'll take a, a break and I'll chop it up and it's all very fluid, but I feel like this is more of a bouncy beat. Plus it's at a slower beats per minute than like my normal stuff. Going back and now that I've added a couple of things to the beats. First thing that I want to show you is the sequence that's going to be the verse and then the main one, which is the chorus. So on the verse, I've filtered down these sounds. Okay, so now I got two banks. This bank here, bank D, the main part, right? That's the main part, but I got the same thing on this side. But that's because I'm going to be doing something different. So I want you to listen to what I'm talking about. I want it to bounce, but I don't want it to be too, you know, trappy. I want that feel, that bounce, because that shit doesn't make you feel good. Okay, that's no lie. But I do want it to still feel the style that I like. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and listen to what I've done. I'm just gonna put the kick in the melody. So that way you can kind of follow what's going on. So after this, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of it. There we go. And I want it to bounce more so it's almost, it's like a borderline just kind of barely pressing into that trap. You know what I'm saying? But it just gives it that bounce. Mm. Mm. Feel me? So there you have it. There's the beat with everything. I'm pretty damn satisfied with the way this has come out. You know what I'm saying? So now that I'm going to add just a few more elements and uh, then I'll be uh, ready to ready to go. All right. So now that my idea is pretty much complete, now it's just to add a couple more finishing touches. I'm going to add the Roland System 8. We're going to add some Sonic Rings to the mix. So here we go. <laughs> 